Hi everybody! Today we're going to have a look at a special sound, the glottal stop. Now one of my users asked me if I could make a video on this and of course if you ask, I answer. So let's make a start. The glottal stop is also sometimes called a glottal plosive. A glottal stop is used in some English accents. Now it does not lead to change in meaning, so we often don't notice the sound. And in fact, you might have never heard of it before. The sound symbol for the glottal stop is this one. It really looks like a question mark without the dot. Now it's a consonant sound and it is a plosive sound. What does that mean again? Let's just remind ourselves a plosive is a sound where the airflow, the flow that the air that comes from your lungs and out of your mouth, that airflow is obstructed and then suddenly released and there's usually that audible you know, that makes um, the airflow audible and this really creates the sound together, of course, usually with the position of our tongue and our teeth and our lips. Now, the glottal stop is a very special plosive. It is unvoiced and that means the glottal vibration stops. So remember that all of the sounds in English can be categorized into voiced and unvoiced sounds and voiced means that your vocal cords that are here start vibrating. But the glottal stop is an unvoiced sound. So that means the um, vocal cords stay open. They do not vibrate. And we also say this is an oral consonant. What does that mean? An oral consonant, that is a sound where the airflow goes out of the mouth not the nose, as in a nasal. So where is the place of articulation? That really is very special with the glottal stop. It's very different to all the other sounds we have in English. The glottal stop is produced in the glottis. Now where is the glottis? <laughs> The glottis is exactly here where your vocal cords are situated in your body. So that's somewhere down here on your throat. In the diagram, you can see those two little vocal cords that usually vibrate when we speak and when we produce voiced sounds. But in our sound, the glottal stop, the space between the two vocal cords stays open. So the glottis is really that space between the two vocal cords. And the glottis, that really means this part closes off when we swallow. So if you're wondering, where is this? I know it's somewhere here, but where exactly? So if you just swallow, you can actually feel mm, there's something closing off here. And that's really to protect you from, you know, not having any liquid or food dropping down your air pipe. That's very important. So the glottis closes when we swallow or it also opens and closes when we cough. So <coughs> again, if you just make that sound quickly, you can feel how it opens and closes. <coughs> very clear. It's here. I can feel it. So try it out yourself. Now let's have a look at some examples so you can actually hear the sound because so far I have not really produced it. So here is an example that is often used um, to help students hear the sound first. It's not really a word. This is something you might say to get another person's attention. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. So if you just say it with me, you can hear bit sort of of a, of a sharp scratchy sound at the start. Uh, 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 uh. 
Now, the glottal stop here comes before the initial vowel, and it does make it quite sharp. Uh, uh. So say it a couple of times, and I think it might help to think of it more of a noise accompanying the other sounds rather than a sound itself. I remember I found it quite difficult to hear the glottal stop at the beginning when I was studying phonology at university. But I think, think about it as more of a little noise that goes with the other sounds rather than a sound in its own right. Let's have a look at some more examples so it becomes clearer and hopefully you can hear it more easily. So very often we actually have a glottal stop to replace another plosive, the unvoiced t sound. And this is also called T glottalization. So the sound t is pronounced as a glottal stop instead. So when do we use the glottal stop then? So the t is at the end of a syllable and then when it's followed by a labial consonant, the t can change to a glottal stop. So a labial consonant, that is a sound that involves either both lips or just one of the lips in the artic articulation. So let's have a look at an example word to make this a bit easier to understand. So here we have the word network. Two syllables and at the end of the first syllable we have a t sound. Net work. Now the sound at the beginning of the second syllable is a w. And if you watch my lips, w, both my lips are involved in the sound production. So this is a labial consonant, w. Net work. Network. However, an alternative pronunciation is network, network. And maybe you can hear the very sort of, very sort of um, quiet little <laughs> sound in the middle now. I'll say it again, network. So here we can drop the T and change it into a glottal stop. Now, some of you might say, wait, 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 I can't hear anything. Isn't that just simply a lesion? The T disappears. No. If that was a lesion, it would sound like ne work. Mm, but that's not what we say. It's not ne work, it's network. So there's a little stop there, and that's the glottal stop. Let's listen again. First with the T, network. Then with the glottal stop, network. And then incorrectly, without any, network. No, that's not correct. The first two options, yes, they are correct. And you can use either. Very often a glottal stop is actually set here in a word like this. So remember, the T sound is not dropped, it changes into a glottal stop. So this is not a legend. Here is another example, the word apartment. So here we have three syllables. And if you have a look at the second part, again, we have a T at the end of the syllable. And then the following syllable starts with M, mm, a nasal, and that's a labial consonant because both my lips are closed when I form it. Mm. So apartment could also change to apartment, apartment. So there's again this little stop in the middle here that makes the vowel a little bit sharper almost. I say both of them again, apartment apartment. Here is another example. That one, obviously that ends in t and w 
one again with a w, a label a consonant, and that one, that one, can also change to that one, that one, a, uh, that one. So there's a, again a glottal stop in between. And I think if you find it difficult to hear that, it does help to remove the sound entirely and then you can see it it sounds really wrong if i were to say that one no sounds a little bit strange that one mm, glottal stop here's another example hate mail again we have a t and then followed by m hate mail can change to hate mail hate mail but again, if I leave the glottal stop out, it would sound like this. Hey, male. Hey, male. You're like, hey, male? Hey? No, no, no. It's hey, male. So there is that little stop in between. Now, the glottal stop is also a very distinctive feature of the Cockney accent that you can hear in the UK specifically in the southern part of England and in London. So here are some more examples involving the glottal stop. That is now a specific regional dialect. The previous examples, um, they are just used throughout the English speaking world, really, especially in the UK. We use the glottal stop a lot in these other words. This year, the following examples, that's a little bit more what we call a Cockney accent. So here we have the word butter. And now that example does not follow the previous rule where the t is at the end of a syllable and then you have a labial consonant. There is no labial consonant following on here. So this is another use. So the word butter in Cockney accent with a glottal stop would be butter, butter. Here's another example, city can change to city, city. And in British and American English, we sometimes have the glottal stop before a syllabic n. Now, if you don't know what a syllabic n is, check out my other video on it. Now, here is an example, the word important. So we have im, port, and then tint. And so three syllables, and it really happens um, in the last syllable. So there's a little schwa here, but sometimes we drop that, and then we have a syllabic consonant. The n becomes the syllabic consonant, really, followed by t. And um, the first t sound can change into a glottal stop, and important can change to important, important. Or oh, here's one more example, frighten, frighten can change into frighten, frighten. Do you need to know how to pronounce the sound? Not necessarily. You've probably noticed that the sound is not included in the phonemic chart for English as a foreign language. Most course books will not include it because it doesn't really count as a full phoneme in English. It means like whether you use it or not, it doesn't lead to change in meaning in all of these words. Um, that's why it's not included in the sound chart and I didn't include it in the one that I showed you. It is, however, part of the IPA, the International Phonemic Alphabet. But do you need to know how to pronounce the sound to speak English? Not necessarily. Um, like I said, it does not lead to a difference in meaning in English, but learning how to pronounce and use it will make you sound more natural, especially when pronouncing the words that I showed you at the beginning. Do you have any more questions on the glottal stop or any other topics to do with English pronunciation? Leave me a comment below and I'd love to get back to you.